get off the right wheel. Let's start. Who would like to answer our first question? How do you deal with team members who are not coachable? <laughs> Cynthia, want to take that one? <laughs> I can. <laughs> wow, is that the million dollar question or what? How many people can relate to having uncoachable partners? Yes. Well, you know, I talk a lot with my team about the three C's and what it takes to be successful. And if you can remember this, I think this will go a long way. And we set the, stone, the, we set the tone at the beginning of the relationship. This is key. Whenever you're building a house or any building, you first do what? You lay a foundation, don't you? I, is it on quicksand? No, because we want the house to be secure. We want the building to be secure. So it's important to begin the conversation with helping people to understand what it takes to be successful in this business. When I say these are the three C's, if you can remember them, you'll go a long way. The first thing I say is coachability. If you are an Olympian or you want to be an Olympian, who do you have training you? Do you see any Olympians with no coaches, no trainers, anyone not helping them to get to the Olympics? No. Do you see professional athletes, whether it's the NBA or NFL or whatever, they have what? Everyone who's successful has coaches. Even some of the best leaders in business around the world have coaches. So coachability, you got to be willing to listen to those who are where you want to be. And if you aren't willing to listen, you're not willing to follow through with what they're advising you to do, then you just prepare yourself for what? Failure. So coachability, commitment, and consistency are those three things. And if you are able to follow through with those three C's, you will have success in this business. Great. Thank you. Natasha, why don't we take our first question? My name is Donald from Portland, Oregon. I have a question, but first I have a statement. The first time I did this, uh, Miss Ashley Cooper had just made platinum senior vice president. And I was so excited about that, but I asked her a hard question. And she said to me that, I will take this back to corporate. What's your name again? And I said, John. She said, what's your name? John. I said, OK, OK. And so it was so exciting to realize that she was then going to lead me from where I was. And so I guess my real question is, when you're excited, how do you take that energy that you have and take it not just from, from the inside of you, but actually put it on somebody? that make them want to just jump up and run around like they're crazy, like their hair is on fire. How do you do that? Because sometimes when I'm talking to the guys, they look at me like I'm crazy. And I'm just, I'm, I'm you know me. That's my question. All right, who'd like to take that one? Me? Oh, <laughs> oh great question, by the way. Um, how do you take energy from inside and put it on the outside? Yes? Why are you looking that way? Look at me. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay. It's like being transparent. So you have to be, you know, if you're excited and you're enthusiastic anyway, people are going to feel it. So it's not like you have to really try. You know, it's when you're trying too hard is when people don't feel it. And oftentimes people feel like, you know, well, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go buy me a new BMW. I'm going to go get me a car even before you hit the position or because you can or you're going to do um, this type of meeting or you're going to have this BOM trying to get people to think that you're something that you're not, but really just being yourself is the best thing you could do. And that is most relatable to people and people will attach themselves to you like glue if they feel like you are real. 
and that is how you transfer energy. Nice. Oh, thank you. Next question. Hi. Uh, good afternoon. I want to first and foremost say I am new to Five Links, just about two months. Great. Welcome. Um, I have a phenomenal SVP, Linda Reed Scott. Linda Scott Reed. I've known her for many years. My question is about time. Because I'm finishing up my doctorate degree in about a month and a half, my biggest thing is I don't want to lose that time this next month and a half that can bring me for me to be able to really bank and do well in terms of what this company has to offer. So how do I manage my next month and a half to grow my business and also finish my degree? Very good question, first of all. Um, the good thing about this opportunity, you do it in your spare time. You create your own pace. Uh, you create your own schedule. But here's the key, you have to create that schedule. So all of us, when we first get in, we have a job, some of us are in school. We have uh, lifestyle responsibilities, okay? But you have to plan like you plan any other thing. So if I never worked out or I haven't worked out in two years, all of a sudden I want to start working out and losing weight, that requires going to the gym. So I'm gonna to have to figure out where in my days or in my weeks or in my months I'm going to place that commitment to go to the gym. So just like that commitment, you go to church on, on Sunday, we all have a commitment to do that, or Saturday, but depending on your belief. You have a commitment to get up every day and go to work Monday through Friday, anybody do that? Do you plan to do that? No, you don't plan? You just do it out of habit now because you've been doing it so doggone long, right? So just basically incorporate, find out where you have some free time. Uh, I did a training a couple of weeks ago. One of the topics was mastering your minutes. Where do you have free minutes? Whether it's five minutes here, 10 minutes there, 30 minutes, master those minutes to commit to those, uh, your five links responsibilities and then build it gradually. This is not overnight success. It starts off slow. You're gonna build it step by step, inch by inch but stay committed, stay dedicated, and do it consistently over a period of time. And then create the habit of doing five links. Thank you. Yes, my name is Ben Bemudu from Delaware. I would like to start to thank five links for now. Like, when I, before I joined five links, I've done several businesses and I failed. But the mindset that five links gave me I cannot equate it to finances or anything. My, I became a total changed person. If you see me 15, uh, two years ago, and now I'm a different person, so I would like to give this to my, upli my uplines, my mentors. They brought me from, I will say, different person to a wonderful person. I will say I'm wonderful because Everybody from church, from everywhere say, what happened to you? Where, where, where are you coming from? And I always tell them five links. Well, my question right now is, how do I deal with downlines who don't want to uh, participate in BOMs, but they want to be in the business? They, don't, they are not coachable. So how do I deal with those kind of persons? It, it's, I'm going to give it to you. I think it's to, to piggyback what uh, Cynthia said earlier. So it's about being coachable. Here's the thing. As you build this, you're going to come across a variety of different people, different personalities, different people have different strengths, weaknesses. Everybody brings something different to the table. You got to meet them where they're at. Okay? We could bring somebody to the well, but we can't force them to drink the water. Okay? We have the opportunity. There's a system in place. We lay it out for them. We help them execute, but we can't execute it for them. So based on how much they're going to give you back to help in their own rescue is what you give to them. So I may treat each person here differently or interact with them differently, but based on what they're giving to their own business is what I'm going to give to them to help their business grow. So it's going to be a case by case, and you can't help everybody. Just because somebody's in this business doesn't mean they're 
in the business, if you know what I mean. Anybody, can anybody identify? Anybody have partners like that? You can't help them more than they want to help themselves, okay? So meet them where they're at, deal with them how they want to be dealt with, but there's a saying in five lanes, you got to help those people that want to be helped, not the ones that need to be helped. Everybody needs it, but not everybody wants it. Hi, my name is William from Hawaii. I'm an executive trainer of Five Links. And my question is, how do I get my team to follow my lead, considering I've shown the product worked, I've done everything, I've joined the High Five Challenge twice, I've lost 50 pounds. How do I get them to follow me? Because I'm 23% away from executive director. <laughs> test, test. Can you hear me? New people. <laughs> Still love them, you know, figure out a very a little bit amount of time to spend there, but new people, man. Just keep producing. I mean, it's great you lost the weight, but new people. You follow me? And when they see you producing, because I've been in a situation where my whole team kind of went on a screeching halt, but I still went out and produced and put a whole new starting line up in my business. And then as they watch me stay excited about what I'm doing, reality kicks in for them that they gotta do something different too. You know, so I can't, it's a voluntary compliance, so it can't make them work. You follow? All right. A, a constant influx of new business partners will fix that problem. Next question. My question is, how do you manage your time when you're a full-time mom, full-time wife, and a full-time business owner? Okay, well, not a, I'm a full-time mom. I'm definitely a single mom full-time. And when I started this business, I'm a respiratory therapist by profession. Um, I was working 60 to 70 hours a week. I was doing overtime with the 60 to 70 hours a week, but I also was on call on those other hours that I wasn't working. And trying to manage a home with three kids. Um, I also had rental properties that were in another state. Um, I was doing it, I was working the business, and I made time. That's what I think a lot of people get stuck at because they think, oh, I've got all of this going on. But I always use this analogy. How many people know Oprah Winfrey, all right? Do you think she made any excuse to not get it done, right? Um, I always say, if you ever see Oprah without makeup, she looks tired, right? <laughs> And that's because she put in the extra hours and the same thing that I had to do as well. I had to make the time to put in those extra hours. So was there nights I didn't go to bed on time? Absolutely. If I'm on my job, am I sneaking making phone calls? Absolutely. You know, am I sneaking text messages to my team? Absolutely. So you find the time that you have, because God gave us all the same 24 hours. I don't think anybody in here is any different from any other multimillionaire. They just make the time. So you just have to make the time. Yeah. Ashley, did you want to answer that? Ashley? Just, I, excuse me. I just want to add on to what she said. I'm not a mother. <laughs> but I am but I'm a father, you know what I'm saying? So there was a period in my business where I was at home a lot, where I went to the school doing lunch for my children, put them on a school bus, did homework with them, teach them how to fold, how to mop, how to take garbage out. And I did a bunch of video calls with half a suit on 10 times a day to keep my production going. But here's the reality. I tell um, women that come into the business or just parents, period, treat the business like it's, like it's your child. You're gonna raise a child 18 years and in some cases, when the child is grown, you still got to take care of them. So if you nurture that, that business like you do your child, change the diaper at night, breastfeed it, make a bottle in the middle of the night when you don't feel like it, and just have the same compassion about the business like you do your child, then you'll be okay. You'll make time. It's important. Ashley, did you want to... I'm going to hit you too, okay? Um, I feel like a super mom some days. Those who know me know I got a lot going on. Um, when I came into this business f over four years ago, um, I had a financial advisory practice, a wealth management practice, over a thousand clients. Uh, I'm a wife. 
Uh, I, at the time, I had a four-year-old and a six-year-old. So these were little kids, preschooler and first grade. And my practice required about 16 hours of my day, every day except for one day a week. Okay, we were coming off of a very heavy recession uh, where a lot of people were adversely impacted. So what I did, Thomas Felder introduced me to this, this business, Platinum Senior Vice President, who, he's been a longtime friend from college. He was working a similar type of schedule in terms of just the rigor, the, the, the intensity of, of the job demands. We're fiduciaries, so we're responsible for what happens to people's lives, if that makes sense. So you don't take that kind of job lightly. But God gave me two babies, and I knew that they were way more important than any thousand clients. Corporate, government, it didn't matter who they were. These children needed their mom, and you are their mom. I am their mom. And there's no secondary role that can, can take the place of that. Dads are great, but we carry these children for nine months inside of our bodies. We nurture them. We feed them with our bodies. And so there's that tie that cannot be broken, and there's a responsibility that can't necessarily be delegated. So what I did was I prayed for wisdom. That was the first thing I did because I saw the opportunity, and I felt that it could help me to be free from all of the, the craziness of my life, and I could actually get the time back that I needed to spend with the children. But how do you make that bridge? So with the prayer that I prayed, God told me this. He says, you're going to get up an hour earlier. Now, mind you, I'm already working 16 hours a day. Where am I getting this time? I said, okay, God, you told me to get up an hour earlier. I went to bed an hour later. Those are the two things he said. Be diligent with the time that you have. So I would get up in the morning. Of course, it was before the children and the husband got up. And so I used that time mostly for preparing for my day training, studying my Bible, prayer, meditation, just kind of figuring out what I was going to do with my day and learning this new business. I did this in a very disciplined fashion. The other piece of information that he gave me, the instruction was to go as you're going through your day, I'm going to give you opportunities to share in every aspect of your life. So if I'm in the bank, there's going to be somebody who's going to just share something with me that gives me an opening to be able to let them know that, you know what, I have an opportunity that you may want to take a look at. And I could be at the post office. I could be sitting with a friend, talking at church, or whatever the case may be. And you'd be amazed at how many opportunities will come to you or you come to it just by accident. But it's not accident. It's actually providential, okay? People are looking for opportunities. What do we have? Opportunities, do we not? So weave that into your life, because you can't make more than 24 hours. We don't get 26, do we? Do we get a bonus 30? No. So use that time diligently. Don't make excuses. You got to do what you got to do as a wife and as a mom and working and all of those things. But be intention about, intentional about your scheduling. Be disciplined about your time, and it'll all come together. I promise you, it will. Thank you. Yes. I want to, I want to, I, I hate to just prolong this question, but I'm going to do it because after listening to the rest of uh, my colleagues, I, I feel like I have to. So, first of all, I want to ask a question to you all. How many of us are mothers or parents? Okay. The second question I want to ask you all is how well are you all good, how good are you in time management? Raise your hand if you're good. Okay, so most of you are like me, right? So here's what, I, not very good at time management. And here's what I want to say. This is what I, I really want to say because I really want to keep it real. How many of us want to raise average children? So the reason why I say that is because why are you doing this business? You're doing this business, why? Primarily for... Your, your children, right? So my grandmother, my great-grandmother was a great woman. And if I could be like anybody, I would be like my great-grandmother. But if we had to scale her, if we had to measure her up against the world, she would be considered average. My great-grandmother raised my grandmother 
who then, if we had to do the same thing, she would be considered average. My mother was a product of my, my grandmother, and if we had to measure her up, she would be considered average. So, how do you raise above average children? And that's by being an above average person. You have to lead by example. That means that you have to sacrifice. There are going to be some times where you are not going to be there when you really want to and you think that you should. But I'm gonna tell you this. I told my daughter, I asked my daughter last summer, this is her eighth grade year, I said, smart kid, I said, hey, her and her friend was in the car and they were going down the street and I asked her, we were, I, asked her I said, Jada, I said, who's the smartest person in your, you all's class? And the guy that was in her class, eighth grade, he says, Ayana, and she said, Ayana, she looked at him like that. Like, you know it's me. <laughs> and so he said, why are you looking at me like that? You would be the smartest person, but you don't do all your work. I said, oh, you don't do all your work. <laughs> oh, that's how you feel. Okay, keep on talking. So, so then I said, why you don't do all your work? And then the head went down, right? And I said, why would you go and do less than the best? Why would you put forth just enough effort? Why wouldn't you give it your all? Why? What comes out of that? And I asked her, I said, Jada, I said, let me challenge you and him both. I said, if you all get straight A's this whole year, I'll give you $1,000 when you graduate, both of you. She said, you won't give me 1000 I said, I'm going to give you $1,000. This year, my daughter has straight A's for the entire year. That's one. This year, my daughter won third place in the Chicago stock market where she was only 400, I'm sorry, second place, she was only $400 away from being number one. And this year, she's going to state because she has won all the different things for her science project and now she's going to the state for being the best. Yesterday, her teacher called me and said, we need this board. They're, they're trying to disqualify her. They need this safety slip on her science board. I'm all in the meeting calling my daughter, hey, let's take care of this. But the bottom line is I'm not there with her. I can't do it, but we have to work together because you will not be an uh, average person and neither will I. But I have to lead by example. So they're watching you. They're watching you. So sometimes when you're gone, it's better to be gone because it's, so, it's showing them a way. It's showing them what it takes to win. It's not always being there and being average is going to get the job done. I want, to, I want my children to never, ever have to ask me for anything. So I pay the price now. And that's what you want. You want your children to be the same way. So you pay the price, and I guarantee you, they will see that. They will see the price that you pay, and they'll become above average citizens. Great. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. My, uh, my question is for uh, Ashley Cooper. Uh, <clears throat> uh, how do you manage all your uh, properties? Like, how do you manage it? My, my properties? Yeah, all your properties. What properties? Your building. Like your buildings and stuff that oh. you have. Okay, you put my business out on the street. <laughs> I can't tell enough because I You must have heard business. this from somebody. I heard it from my husband and I okay. came down here just to see you because he, he <laughs> tell me everything about you. And I got in the business, but I wasn't 100% in it. And by me seeing that pass on the stage, he touched me. Uh -oh. And I was like, I got to get in this. Thank so. you, Pastor McKnight. <laughs> I got a business partner now. <laughs> yeah, so how do you handle, um, how do I manage properties? Yeah. Well, I don't. I pay somebody else to manage the properties. 
So you, once you get to a place where, you know, basically, um, I used my, I, I messed up money when I, was a, uh, when I was younger. I had got a house and I got equity lines of credit off that house and I messed up money. And I look back on that and I said, what do I have to show for the money that I messed up? I mean, to some people it was nothing, but $100,000, I couldn't tell you one thing I purchased with it. Does that make sense? And so that's when I decided when I made a lot of money in five links, I said, I have to have something to show for this money. I can't, I can't uh, just have some Gucci shoes, okay? <laughs> or a purse. I need to have something that's tangible that, you know, if anything was to happen, I have something. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that's uh, what I did with my five links money. And that five links money, this vehicle, was allow, allow me to become financially free with the properties. So now we own properties, but we pay a property manager. So I have a question. How do you deal with negative family members who don't support you? I'll take that. <laughs> I don't deal with them, you know. <laughs> uh, when I first came into business, of course, like with everybody, you, you're excited, you're running up and jumping around like a jumping bean, and none of your family seem to understand why you're so excited, because they're looking at you like, you was a janitor for years, what are you talking about? Or in my case, I was a, a DJ touring, and that's all I knew, jumping on planes, doing concerts. So they really thought I was crazy, because I walked away from it while touring. I joined this business a month after my, my last tour that year in 2005, and they like, you're crazy. So maybe two people in the business you know, maybe two people in my family became a customer on our Global Links product back in that time. And they canceled the service maybe 60 days later. And nobody in my family supported from a customer standpoint since. And that's just been what it was. But I kept on going, you know, and thus I'm a senior vice president with an organization. Uh, I don't have to get up and go to work like my family do. And I see them change jobs every two, three years. And it's just a reality. So I don't deal with them. At first I was emotional about it. But just recently as of maybe... A year ago, after I came back from Cancun, I forgave all of them. <laughs> so, that I could, so I could free myself, because I was anchored down by being mad at them. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm, I love my family again, and they don't understand why I love them again, because I was being, I was upset with them, you know? But not no more, I forgave them, I still love them, and I'm, we all good now, and I don't ask them nothing about the business. And they probably wondering why I don't ask them. I said, because I don't even care, because there's over 300 million people in America, you know? There's always going to be negative people around you, whether they're family, friends, acquaintances, associates, colleagues, coworkers, whatever the case may be. And that's gonna happen from the point you become an IMR to beyond platinum and diamond. Unfortunately, that's never gonna stop. But here's the thing, you, you have to one, believe in what you're doing, okay? Uh, I'm sure there have been many times in life outside of Five Links that people were negative on something that you were doing, whether it was your job, a hobby, or whatever the case may be. But if you believed in it strong enough, you had a passion for what you were doing strong enough, it didn't matter what the negative people said to you or did to you, okay? You know where you're going. So for me, it was like, am I gonna buy into the negative people that were living a life where I was either at, below, or above, or buy into somebody that was positive and living the quality of life that I wanted to live. See, we have a choice in this. This is not traditional, so a lot of people aren't going to see it. It's just the reality of what we're building. They don't teach this in school, okay? But because it's off the beaten path and because it's not traditional, you're gonna have the ability to yield some non traditional results as well. So the belief is going to keep you going. Brush that dirt off your shoulder and just keep it moving. I know it's hard, we're human, we're emotional, but at the end of the day, you have the choice to buy into them or buy into the people that are where you want to be. Hi, my name is Juana, I'm from New Jersey. Um, I have a question. Um, how do you keep being positive and, and keep the momentum going when you just found out that your mentors left the company? 
Okay. <laughs> so um, here's what I want to say to you, okay? I want you to add, I want everyone in here uh, because you all are strong individuals just for staying here this late. So give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> but I want you to do me a favor when you leave here. Will you all do me a favor? I want you to tell 10 people outside, 10 people that you encounter everywhere you go that did not stay. I want you to give them this message. So I'm gonna stand up. Who is your mentor's mentor? Are you asking me? Who is your mentor's mentor? Ask this question. Who is your mentor's mentor? See. My mentor is Marsha Fortson. His mentor is Mr. Jones. We're solid. Why are we solid? Because someone is always looking up to someone else. Mr. Jones' mentor is Kenny Trout. Who is your mentor's mentor? See, a lot of your mentors, their mentors left a long time ago. And when the head leaves, the body follows. Ask yourself, Ask yourself, who is your mentor's mentor? Because if they're mentoring themselves, it won't be long. I wanted to jump in on that one because I had that happen to me. Um, I went from having a upline that I spoke to every single day, 10 times a day and they decided to go to a different company. But see, I didn't sign the application to get involved in Five Links because of him, right? See, God put this in my life for a reason, okay? And just because man decides to do something else, and although I had the utmost respect for them, and I valued their decision to make that decision for their family, it was not the decision for my family. And so I made the decision that when God brought something into my life, no man was gonna make me make a decision to walk away from it. Okay? So when you know that you know that you know down deep inside that God put this in your life and you're supposed to do great things with it, it doesn't matter what anybody does. It only matters what you do. First of all, let, let's give it up for all the trainers that were on the stage here today. All right. There have been signs from the first presenter, Kate Milia Collier, and everybody after that has spoke to this in some capacity, some hard, some in a soft manner. You're in this for you, nobody else. Whether they're above you, beside you, or below you, if somebody chooses to leave, that's their prerogative. I don't mean to sound like Bobby Brown, but that's your prerogative, <laughs> their prerogative, right? You're in this for you. There's a platform here. There are tons of people here that are excited about where we're at. And just because this all of a sudden is not on the radar for somebody else that happens to be around you, doesn't mean it's not for you, okay? Think about your family and your reason why. That's not the reason why. That person is not the reason why you got in. Uh, like she said, it, it's for you and what you were able to do or what you saw this as a vehicle to doing for your family and the people around you. Don't let anybody decide your fate because they have a change in opinion and a change in heart. We're still here. <laughs> Hashtag still strong, stay your ground. I wanna chime in, I wanna chime in on, on the team. Um, let me ask you this question. Have you cried about this yet? You say no? Well, it's an old saying that our mentors taught us, John O. Jones, Platinum Senior Vice President John O. Jones mentioned to me years ago, if you haven't cried, then you have the wrong why. No, when you ask me if I cried about being the, the, in the, the company? The, the situation, the whole situation, period. Have you cried about it? Oh, yes. Okay, well, yes. great. And just strap up and reset, put some closure to it, and just move forward. You know what I'm saying? Move forward, yes. Persevere. Yes, yes because it took a lot 
especially financially for me to be here. Yeah. Like I had to sell a whole bunch of stuff. Congratulations. And um, I was determined to be here. And then these people keep sending me texts and why are you going? And I don't want to hear that. I need to be here. I got, a, I got a word for you. Just you tell them in the text response. Tell them to move around. Tell them to move around and just be done with it. You know, we got things to do over here. So tell them peace and blessings and, you know, all that good stuff that you could think of in, in a good proper letter <laughs> and just let's, let's, let's build this business right here. All right. The, the, there's a lot of that floating in the air this weekend. Yeah. The, and some people can identify like this young lady right here. For every person that leaves, there's 10, 20 people here that will help you out. Yeah. Okay? A hundred people here that will help you out. Okay? So let them do them, but now start to surround yourself. Just leaders in the front. Stand up. All the leaders in the front. All the platinums. All the diamonds. Stand up. Okay? We are doing this. You are not alone in this journey. So even though somebody that may have been close to you is gone, and I've been through that years ago, I'm going through it again now, it's okay. I'm here for me, not them. But now I'm attaching myself with, if you have to, a whole different circle of people within five links because we're unified, we're family, and we are going to get to a billion dollars. So we're here to support you, to help you, and to Facts. endure with you. Thanks. All right, our last question. Add to that? I just, I just want to say that, you know, we, I, I'm from Chicago, okay? You know, you know a little bit about Chicago? Chicago is where organized crime came. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, but Chicago, <laughs> this is, this is where we, 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 you we put hits out there, right? Is that what you're saying? You got hits put out there? My, my, my point that I want to make to you is this. This is my point. Why would, why would, I feel like this, and this is just how I feel. If the boat was to sink, right, shouldn't we go down with the boat? <laughs> I mean, I mean, this is just how I feel. I feel like, I feel like if I brought you on this boat and I got what I came for, but you didn't get what you came for, I'm not going to help the boat stay afloat so you can get what you came for. I'm going to leave because I got to pay my bills. I mean, that's just me. I mean, that sounds selfish to me. That sounds inconsiderate to me. That sounds like you're thinking about yourself. And that's not, why, that's not what you committed to. You said, I'm going to help you. Now your dream is crushed, and you got to decide to go do something else with a different type of thing, with a different type of, and you got to ruin possibly your reputation. You got to tell, go to another household and say, you know what, I'm not doing that no more. I'm doing this. I know you, were, you weren't even going to buy this, but now I want you to say no to this. No, I'm not going to put you in that position. I mean, that just don't make, it don't make sense to me. So think about it from that standpoint. The people that are here, you have leadership here. Whether you believe it or not, there is an upline here for you. So just, and that's for everybody that's in this room. Just understand, there's people that are, like Huck said, committed to your success. Do not let... Let's go together, wherever we going. Like the Titanic, baby. We're going to go down together. We're going to be in the water together, saying, I love you together. That's how I feel. Because then if, if, if something happens, what can we do? We can all get back up together. But bottom line, let's, let's ride it out. What we got to lose? What we have to lose? Nothing. What do we have to gain? Everything. That's it. All right. So, so you know what? Let's stop talking about this. Let's stop talking about this. Yeah. Let them go. These are the same people who wouldn't even come to your house. Wouldn't even do no home party for you. <laughs> and you worried about them. I pull up in that Bentley in the hood every day. I was on the West Side win every day. Give you their shirt off their back. They won't give you a dollar. How many people I've helped to get here? Please, I don't want to hear that.
last. And so don't listen to people who will give you nothing. Them the last people you want to follow. They ain't gonna give you nothing. Please. I'm done with them. Bye, bye, bye Felicia. Bye Felicia. Say bye Felicia. All right, let's hear our last question of the day. Good afternoon. I think that concludes the question and answer part of this. <laughs> What's your question? My question, this is Dwayne Thomas from New Jersey. And my question is, what is the biggest hurdle that you had to overcome to achieve the success that you have right now, and what did you do to overcome that particular hurdle? That's for anybody. Being broke. <laughs> I, tell, I tell people all the time, if you're not willing to be broke, you're not gonna be successful. Period. Right, Thomas? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be broke, right? You had to take a pay cut to get a pay increase, right? You had to sacrifice the money, right? Yeah, you gotta, get, you gotta be broke. Who willing to be broke? Who willing to say, no, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna ride it on now and be broke. Yeah. I told my brother, I said, all you gotta do is be broke for a minute. We gonna ride this thing on out. You gotta be broke. Back up. You, you already broke, how about that? We already broke. <laughs> But you think your brokenness is not as broke as my brokenness. So when I was going through my brokenness, maybe I couldn't afford that nice car that you think was, okay, your car was okay, it was average. But maybe I couldn't have that. Or maybe I couldn't have this type of lifestyle because I was just a tad bit broker than you. But we all broke, we don't own nothing. We don't have nothing. You gotta be broke. So what you willing to do? You willing to give it up, give all of it up to gain everything? That's what, you, that's what success, that's what success means. To be willing to give it all up. God took them up to the mountain and he said, would you give your son, right? The sacrifice, right? And they said they would, but he didn't take the life. Does that make sense? But he was willing. What are you willing to do? And that is going to determine your level of success. Wow. She, she took the word out of my wild mouth. You got to be willing. You got to be willing. And the biggest willing you're going to have to be is willing to do something different. Because for most of us, including me, this was something different. It was foreign territory. I never did anything like this before. I came from corporate America. I, worked, I was an employee. I was a nicely paid employee, but I was still an employee. This was being an entrepreneur, being a business owner, which required doing some different things, developing different habits, different processes, and even a different mindset. You're going to have to think differently. You're going to have to be willing to do all of that. Not overnight, but over a period of time. See, a lot of people are trying to fit this into what they were already doing and doing it the same way. It's not going to work. But if your why is strong enough, you'll be willing to do those different things. Did I want to do a PBR? No. But the people that were where I wanted to be did PBR. So what did I start doing? Did I want to start calling family members and friends in a capacity I had never called them before? No. But the people that were where I at where it wanted to be, that's what they did to get there. So what did I do? I started doing something that I didn't want to do, but I became willing all of a sudden. See, getting to a destination uh, will make you do some things, or wanting to get to a destination will make you do some things differently. And all of us are going to have to get that resolve deep inside of us that we're going to have to do some things differently and master those new things that we're going to learn through this process. So that different mindset, the different habits, sacrificing time. Time is a big issue for everybody. We talked about it, a few people asked about that. Everybody has 24 hours in a day. You, everybody says, I need more time. Uh, 
you're never going to get it. Stop asking for it, you're never going to get it. You just got to figure out how to create it within the time that you already have. And how do you do that? You have to be willing to do it, okay? So it's in there, you just got to figure it out. And, and for me, it was by any means necessary. So I started adopting different habits, different processes, and different practices in the midst of everything I was doing because I couldn't quit a job. We're not asking you to quit your job. We're asking you to put yourself in a position so you can quit your job. But if you're doing the same things that you were doing before, that's the definition of insanity, keeping, continuing to do those things, expecting a different result, it's not gonna happen. Every single leader on this front, these front two rows decided at some point that they were willing to do something different and then they began to execute it. Was it easy? No, it wasn't hard. Anybody can do this business. The system is in place. You don't have to figure anything out. You just have to plug in and do it. But at the end of the day, willing is the word that is going to allow you to do it. A kid could do this better than us because they're not jaded by being an adult and being set in your ways. Anybody set in your ways? Be willing to become unset in those ways. Okay, so for me, that was the biggest obstacle. I had to start living differently. I had to start doing some things differently or stop spending time with some of the people that I didn't really need to spend time with to get to where I wanted to be. Everybody's not going in that direction that you're going to. Okay, you have to be willing to maybe not disconnect from people, but to separate or distance in some capacity people that are not aspiring to be where you, be, you're, you want to be. So it's really about, again, surrounding yourself with those people as well. So I started surrounding myself with success. Success not in the capacity of where I came from, but where I wanted to be in this opportunity. I was willing to do that. So that key word that Ashley said, willing, be willing to do some things different and uh, apply it and do it consistently. And I guarantee you, everybody in this room is your future diamond. It's just a matter of time. But again, the biggest word, if I want you to take something home tonight, take home that word willing. Be willing to do something different and execute. Hopefully that helped you. I want to chime in on that. Uh, let me ask you a question. Isn't these people beautiful up here? Isn't these people beautiful up here? Yes. Please, I just want to hear y'all say that. Because y'all are beautiful too. But let me just say this. I'm real short with it, and I'm going to echo everything that they're saying. Just you the, you, you the worst enemy of your situation at the end of the day, the person in the mirror. So once you get past yourself, then it all opens up. You know what I mean? And that's when it just kind of add this to it. My father told me a long time ago, he said, um, he said, why do people love the devil? Anybody know why do people love the devil? Anybody know that? Because he gives you nothing. It's smoky mirrors, it's fluff, it's hype. He said, if everybody eating that type of food, don't eat it. You know what I'm saying? So that's the same principle with this. It's just like the plane taking off, it's fighting against gravity to get to this point of, of flight. It's the same type of thing you're gonna go through with this situation. Just get comfortable with the objections and, and, and adversity, man, and you're gonna be okay, bro. You, you're already in the right place already, so you're already achieving by even being here. So even when your business is not growing, as long as you're still growing, then you're gonna be okay. You follow that? Absolutely. All right. Cynthia and Lenore, do you wanna answer that question? What's your biggest yeah. obstacle? You know, I, I would say there's a couple of them. Uh, they're like twins. Um, one of the things is we get disappointed in people. Anybody have a challenge with that? You have expectations that are here and they're down there. Promises that are made and aren't kept. Uh, you know, the young lady talked about her team leader leaving. Um, Jim Rohn says something quite profound that says we should discipline our disappointments. So discipline is something I think most of us are challenged with, number one. The art of being consistent. The art of really moving through a process over and over and over and over until you've mastered it, right? With that mastery becomes excellence. With that excellence becomes a pay raise, right? Think about the people who are the best at whatever their industry is or whatever their, their craft is. They're typically the best paid, right? But they had to go through some things. They had to go through the learning curve like Daryl Huckabee talked about, right? There's some things that we don't know we've got to learn, we've got to grow us. 
And part of growing us has to em envelop or incorporate the disciplines, the daily disciplines. And with, when we're dealing with people, they're the best part of this business, but they're also the worst part of this business. Can we just agree on that, right? There's some great people and there's some folk who just aren't. But if you can just get to the point where you're moving past all of that, you, you let it roll off your back a little bit like the water on a duck's back, and you're moving on to the next thing, and not make your highs so high and your lows so low. Just try to keep it somewhere in the middle, right? Even keel, even keel. You can deal with the good and the bad as long as you're ready to discipline your disappointments and even the highs. Discipline yourself to just come right back into that middle lane and you're going to be okay. You will stay through the long term. All right. Lenore, did you want to answer that? Well, I'll make this real short and simple. Being okay when people don't have the vision and going and finding the people who do have the vision. That's all you have to keep doing is finding the right people. Short, simple, and to the point. All right, great. Well, thank you everyone for your participation. Let's give another round of applause to our panel. Thank you very much. <laughs>